Well, this was just a setup for this message, for sure. God's obviously wanting to do something here today. He's doing something in your life. And the name of my uh, message this morning is God of the Breakthrough. Like, all right, come on. So we're going to have some breakthroughs today. And I just want to say to each one of us today that God is able. God's able. You may not always feel it. You may not always see it. But God is able. And God wants to step into your story. He wants to step into your life. He wants to step into that difficult place. God's able. God's able. And he wants to do mighty things in and through you. But the enemy doesn't want him to use you. So he's going to mess with you. So today we're going to confront some of these things. See, the God of breakthrough wants to invite us into the process. And yes, we believe in instant breakthroughs and miracles, and we love that. We love when we see an instant breakthrough. But I'm telling you, there are so many, many more times that we have to walk through the process. And it's in the process that we are changed. It's in the process that our roots go down deep. It's in the process that God strengthens us and changes us and gives us his mind and gets rid of our old thinking. It's in the process We need to walk through the process sometimes, a lot of the times. But boy, oh boy, it's hard sometimes to go through the process. It's not an easy thing to go through the process, but God is with you through the process. He's with us on the way to the breakthrough. And some of you, like Tim was addressing, you feel like, you know, God, I'm, I'm moving forward. I'm reading your word. I'm coming to church. I'm serving. I'm doing all the things you're asking me to do, but I'm not seeing the change that I need to see. Well, I'm here to tell you and to encourage you to quit measuring your view of change Because God's view of change is very different. See, there's a lot of change going on inside of you that you may not see. We beat ourselves up, like Cindy was saying, that we we take it personally. We think we don't measure up. We think we are the big mess up, and we do mess up. God knows that. You're no big surprise to him. Your mess ups are no big surprise to God. But God, in his goodness... He loves us through the process. And there is a change going on. It just takes time. It takes time. It takes time to see these things come forth. You know, it's interesting when you go to the gym and you work out. And uh, Tim and I, I kind of fell off the bandwagon of going to the gym. And you go back to the gym. You start working out. And I'm not going to walk out of the gym with my muscles and all buff and all, you know, where I want to be. It takes time. In fact, when I first go back to the gym, I walk out of the gym and I'm hungry. I want to eat something. I want to go get pizza. Go get coffee, right? It takes time. But as we stay with it, we get stronger. We feel better. And it's the same thing spiritually. As you stay with God, as you stay in God, as you run to him, as you seek him, You change, you get stronger, and you look back and you're like, wow, God, you've done a great thing. Wow, God, I'm not where I used to be. And there's breakthroughs. There's little breakthroughs on the way to the bigger breakthroughs all of the time. So all of us face battles. We all face challenges. It's the world we live in. And all of our battles look different. And God works differently with each one of us. He does different things. And I do believe more walls are going to fall today. I believe we're going to see more walls break down today. So today we're looking at a very familiar story in the Bible. And that is the story about the walls of Jericho falling down. That's when when Tim said walls. He's like, yeah, he knew what I was about to preach. But the walls of Jericho vividly demonstrate the miraculous power of God. You know, we, we want to take things into our own strength, but there is a miraculous power of God that only can take place by God's power and not our strength. See, we see the children of Israel coming out of 40 years in the wilderness. 
And now God is saying, it is time. It is time to go take the land of Canaan. It is time to go take your promised land. But just like life, there's a big obstacle, obstacle in their way. And that is this big wall around the city of Jericho. So they're looking at this big wall and they're going, Lord, I don't know how we're going to take that. I don't know how we're going to get that. Put up that picture of the wall. I don't think it's the, it's not the exact wall, but it gives you an idea. This wall was unconquerable and it was 11 feet high and 14 feet wide. It's a big wall. It's a big wall. You ain't going to kick that wall in. You ain't going to just go through that wall. You need the power of God. Say, thank God's the break, God of the breakthrough. Say, God of the breakthrough. God, you are the God of the breakthrough. When we see impossible, God always sees possible. Look at Joshua 6, 1 through 5. It says, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its kings and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. And the seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day... You shall march around the city seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpets, and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. That's powerful. That's powerful. I love how he says, see, I have given you Jericho into your hands. I've given it into your hands. Do you see it? Do you see it? See, God goes on to give them a strategy. Sometimes you, you may see it, but then you're like, well, God, what's next? You got to listen. You got to listen for the instructions because there's a strategy from God for your situation. But he needed Joshua to see it. He needed Joshua to see it so he could do it God's way. We often want to do it our way and then we wonder what happened. We wonder why it's a mess and why are we now in this place. It's because maybe you saw it, but you did it your way. God wants us to see it and do it his way. We need spiritual eyes. In this moment, in this time, in this hour, we need God's spiritual eyes we need our eyes open to what he's speaking to what he's saying to his heart we need our eyes open before tim and i had planted this church we were at a conference and the pastor and i shared this with some of our um, leaders and huddled the other day this pastor said um i see a church and he went on to say what he saw his church was going to look like and I just want to tell you a few things before Tim and I, four and a half years ago, stepped out to plant this church, what we saw in the spirit. Actually, we saw it back 25 years ago. And it's just been a progression and it's been a growth and God changing us and getting us to this point and this time where he's like, okay, it's time to go. It's time to step out. And so I see a church and Tim saw a church that was passionately pursuing Christ. A church passionate about Jesus. That's the kind of church we see. I see a church filled with the Holy Ghost and with power. That's the church I see. I see a church that goes beyond these walls and goes out and is helping people, loving people, pointing people to Jesus, praying for people. I see that kind of church. We come here, we rally, we get equipped, and then we go out. We go out and we minister to the hurting and to the lost. That's the church I see. I see a church pursuing the presence of God. 
Oh, I love that. I see a church unified with one purpose, one heart, and one mind in Christ. That's the church that we see. I see a church with people pursuing holiness and people walking in humility. We need humility in this hour. And a healthy church, that's the church I see. Will there be people that make messes? Yes, we all are messy. Where there's people, it's going to get messy. But overall, we want to be a healthy place. We want to be an encouraging place. Where Tim and I are always like, let's just get it on the table and deal with it. And let's move forward. We want to be a healthy place of people with integrity and good character. That's the church I see. And each one of you are a part of the church that we saw and the church that we are now seeing come into be. And that church is going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to expand. Our influence is going to grow. And our influence will expand and lives will be set free and lives will be transformed. Why? Because God said, I need you to see. I need you to see because there's more. There's more that I have for you. And if we wouldn't have obeyed, you all wouldn't be sitting here right now. And even though it's hard and even though we see Sometimes we just want to say, God, I don't know. That's too much work. That's too hard. I don't want to do that. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep seeing what God has for you because it will motivate you to do the hard stuff. You can press forward. And we always say, do what God puts in front of you to do. What's in front of you to do? What's in your hand? Sometimes we're wanting what's in the other person's hand. Yeah, we're, we're wanting what the person over there has. What's in your hand? What's God asked you to do? You got to see. You got to see. Joshua 6, 11 says, So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once. Then they came into the camp, and they lodged in the camp. So I love this little example here. Because number one, it doesn't always make sense what God asks you to do. It didn't make sense that God says, okay, go in circles. <laughs> really, God? That's going to bring down the walls. Really? Really, God? Okay, we're going to go in circles. He'll call us to do stuff that don't make sense, but you do it anyway. You do it anyway. When you look back at the children of Israel and how they spent 40 years in the wilderness doing what? going in circles it makes perfect sense that he asked them to go in some more circles it makes all sense right but even when it doesn't make sense you stay faithful you faithfully depend on a god that is able you faithfully depend on a god that if he said it he will do it and know that he's able and that's when you will see victory that's when you will see breakthrough that's when you will see change and even if you don't see it, you've got to have a resolve to say, I will still serve you. I will serve you when I don't see it. I will serve you no matter what. Because we don't serve him to get something. We serve him because he's worthy. He's worthy. So they began the circling process. And um, Tim and Steve, come up here. I'm going to just use you two. Come up here and you two just stand right here with your backs looking at the nice screen. All right, but give me room so I can here stand right here. Come back, right here. All right, Steve and Tim, get closer. It's okay. They no, just back up. Okay, they are the wall of Jericho. Okay, you're a wall, so just be a wall and be quiet. Okay. <laughs> I got the microphone now. <laughs> but so many times we're looking at this wall and we're looking at it as a big obstacle in our life and so they had a choice when God said okay you're gonna go around this wall but no more go grumbling and complaining and so they had to go around the wall trusting God God you told me to do it I'm gonna trust you I'm gonna look at you and I'm not gonna look at this Jericho wall I'm gonna believe you because you are the God of the breakthrough and I know that you can make a way where there seems to be no way and God I'm just gonna look at you and not look at the obstacle you guys keep staying there so we have to circle the with promise in sight 
not with the problem in sight. So many of us circle, we start feel like we're going in circles in life, and all we're doing is focusing on the problem. We're not remembering there's a promise. God gives us promises. And so getting back to the, to the I thing, what are you seeing in your life, in your circumstance, in your situation? What are you seeing? Will you continue to move through life with eyes of fear or with eyes of faith? It's your choice. It's your choice. What are you going to focus on? What are you going to focus on? Are you going to look and say, yeah, I know things are going to be bad. I know things won't change. I know, I know this circumstance. It's impossible. And I don't know what's going to happen. Are you going to just circle around the situation? You know, I hope I don't have to see this person. I hope I don't have to do this. Oh, God, I'm a failure. I, I don't know what you're going to do with my life. And you just keep circling your Jericho and your negative and your complaining. And when we complain... We remain. When we complain, we don't go anywhere good. And so what I love about this, if you jump back to Joshua 6.10, look at this. It said, now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice. Not a word shall proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you to shout. Wow. See, the children of Israel... When they were in the wilderness for 40 years, they walked around the mountain complaining and grumbling, and they remained in the wilderness. A short journey took 40 years. Why? Because they didn't know how to shut their mouths. Because they didn't know how to finally put their eyes on God and say, God, I trust you. God, I know you're able. He gave them manna. I mean, who gets manna falling out of heaven? He feeds you, and you're still grumbling and complaining that it wasn't a big steak. Come on, he fed you. He provided for you. We have to guard the grumbling and the complaining. And see, what he's wanting us to do is to start walking around that wall. He told them to be quiet. Some of you need to be quiet. Believe me, I'm talking to myself because there's times I got to learn to shut my mouth too. <laughs> it's easy to do. It's easy to just talk about the problem and talk about the person and talk about the issue and talk about my insecurities and then talk about my pain and talk about uh, whatever it is. We talk too much. And here, what he's doing is he's showing the children of Israel this time as you go around the obstacle. This time, as you go around the wall of Jericho, I want you to be silent. And he's teaching them, as you're silent, you're obeying me. And as you're obeying me, I will break through. Thanks, guys. You can go sit down. Amen? We've got to obey the Lord. And that's not a popular message today. We just want to hear how he can bless my life. And do everything for me, God. Just do it all, God. You're my friend, and he is. But let me tell you, God's requiring some stuff out of you. Oh, yes, he does it all, but he expects us to do our part. And sometimes he's asking us to be quiet. And then at other times he's saying, it's time to raise a shout. We got to trust him. Whoo! Joshua 6, 15 through 20. Let's get on with the story. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and they marched around the city seven times in the same manner. And on that day, only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, and it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. And we'll come back to that in a minute. She and all with her, with her in her house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse. 
and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord, and they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people sound uh, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat the people went up into the city and every man straight before him and they took the city they took the city with a great shout the wall fell flat a great shout a great shout. And I love it because he's the God of the breakthrough. And God always keeps his promises. Sometimes you don't feel like he keeps his promises. But maybe it's because your ex expectation hasn't been his will. See, we have to expect what he wants, not what we want. We have to hear his heart. And see, notice. Well, I want to say a couple things here before I jump. Notice that. Right before the breakthrough, he's, he's warning them. Once you get this breakthrough, don't go and get the accursed things. So many times we get a breakthrough in an area, and then we run right back to that accursed thing. And then we wonder, what happened? Well, the Lord's saying, I set you free. Now stay free. Stay in me. Keep your eyes off the thing that is your stumbling block. Keep your eyes off the thing that will trip you up because you and I, we all know what trips us up. We all know what buttons are pushed that cause us to do or say or act a certain way. Guard those things in your life. But notice that God was helping the Israelites as he was helping them to break through the wall to take the city, that at the same time, he was breaking Rahab the harlot out of bondage and the life she had been in. That's redemption. I love that. See, they saved Rahab the harlot. Why? Well, it says in the story, let's go back. It says because she hid the messengers that were sent. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. But why did they feel it necessary to say Rahab the harlot? Why did we need to know that? Why? Because it's very important. Because the world, what the world views as no good, God views as beautiful. Because God's in the redeeming business. Because God takes what is the unlikely, and I've said it a million times, I am so unlikely to be up here doing what I'm doing, but God takes those of us that are insecure, those of us that can be fearful, those of us that it makes no sense why God's doing what he's doing with your life, and it confounds the wise. And see, he's showing us that Rahab, Although she had a past, although she had messed up in everyone's eyes, and although people would like to point at her and put her down, she had a heart to trust God. She had a heart to serve God because she had heard what the Lord God had done, how he had been with the children of Israel. And I'm telling you right now, this is just a word I feel in my spirit. There are people in your life that you just want to kick to the curb, that you want to say, Lord, these people will never change. And you don't like them and you don't even want to see them get anything good. But I'm telling you, you need to see them through the eyes of faith see them through God's eyes of love because they're beautiful in his eyes they're beautiful in his eyes and our God restores our God redeems our God is able to take someone that is so unlikely and make them very likely that's only by the power of God oh my goodness I don't know if y'all are getting this it's often said that Rahab, while being a true historical person, also served as a sim symbolic foreshadowing or a type of the church of Gentile believers. She was, in fact, the first recorded Gentile convert. That's pretty cool. And it goes on to say that she was part of a pagan world system. She was a prostitute who by her conversion was enabled to become a legitimate bride now through Christ. But Rahab married Salmon, I guess that's his name, S-A-L-M-O-N, and had a son, Boaz. 
Rahab is listed in the genealogy of Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Matthew. Rahab. Rahab. I don't see all the pompous priests, their names being mentioned in the genealogy of Christ. But Rahab the prostitute was. Come on, someone. Come on, someone. Come on. Don't mark them off. Don't write them off. Rahab is considered to be a righteous woman in Scripture. Isn't that amazing? We so get fixated on whether it's us, where we're at right now, or someone else, where they're at right now. But we've got to start having eyes of faith that look beyond right here and now. I've done it myself where I'm like, I don't even know how that's possible. But God's able to do anything. He's the God of the breakthrough. He can change anyone if their heart will surrender to them. She was a woman of grit. I love that. And as God's people, we need to be people of grit. We got to be, oh, come on. We got a lot of weak Christians. I'm going to tiptoe into church. Everybody just stay in your place and nobody bother me. <laughs> We're here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why are we so mousy? Oh, we got to be people of grit, people that stay the course, people that trust God at all costs. Come on. He wants the people that say yes to the cost. There's a song that I love and it says yes to the cost. Yes and amen. I will say yes to the cost. And believe me, my flesh don't always feel like it. This morning, my flesh did not feel like it. Just ask Tim. I'm like, Lord, I got to preach and I don't feel like it. <laughs> but it doesn't matter how you feel. Your feelings are fickle. Your feelings will lie to you. Your feelings will get you all off course. But you got to step into his presence. You got to go to the word of God. You got to devour the word of God. So when our emotions get all weird, all of a sudden the word just takes over. The word of God rises up in you. The presence of God surrounds you. And you can do what he's asked you to do. I'm living proof of that. Amen. Hallelujah. I know none of you have been there, but I have been there. <laughs> Unfortunately, the church has been busy teaching more coping skills than conquering skills. But it's time for us to be people that conquer. And it's not in your power, but it's only by the power of God. Oh, and the only way we conquer anything is by hearing his voice. Hearing the word and obeying his voice. You got to obey. You got to apply the voice of God in your life. It's called persisting. We got to be persisting. The word persisting means refusing to give up or let go. Don't give up and don't let go of Jesus in your hard times. Don't let go. Persisting is a godly character. I love that. And we are called to endure. We are called to carry on despite hardship. That's who we are. That's who we are. We're called to persevere. Persevere. Look at Romans 5 through 1, 1 through 5. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And what does that produce? Perseverance, character, and character, hope. We have hope. We have hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Given to us. So I'm going to close this quick because we got water baptism to do. But I want to give you six keys to breakthrough. I got keys today, six of them. I was like, I'm so proud of myself. I usually don't have points or anything. But today, your key one is to persist in prayer. You got to persist in prayer. You will be frustrated if you don't pray, thy will be done. 
If you're praying, my will be done, you are going to be frustrated your whole life. You're going to be so frustrated. We got to get in alignment in what God's will is, what his plan is for you. And prayer changes things more than it, it actually changes you. Prayer changes you more than your circumstances because then you have a new perspective. Amen. Amen. And so often we, we tend to feel awkward in prayer. And I just want to encourage you today that sometimes when you get into prayer and you're thinking, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to pray. I'm just telling you what. You just need to pick up the word of God. You need to just start praying some scripture. Because I don't know what you're just, you know, feeling awkward about. Because I'm going to, here, I'm going to read this to you. You can pick up. In Psalms, Psalm 71, and you could just start praying and saying, in you, oh Lord, I will put my trust. Let me never be put to shame, God. Deliver me into your righteousness and cause me to escape the enemy. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given me the commandment to save me. For you are my rock and you are my fortress. Just pray the word of God. If nothing else, and you will never run out of something to pray about. It's right there. It's right there. The word of God is right there. Pray through the Psalms. Pray through the Gospels. Pray. Pray the Word of God. Pray the will of God for your life, for your family. You always have something to pray. Pray bold prayers. Pray bold prayers. Second one is persistent obedience. We have to obey because your breakthrough is con- uh, connected to your obedience. Your breakthrough is connected to your obedience. You will see breakthrough in your life as you obey God. As you have a big yes for him, you're going to see things open up for your life. I'm just telling you. I think that all says says it all. Persistent silence. I love this because that's hard, especially for us girls. We have a hard time being quiet. But have times with God where you just sit in his presence. Oh my goodness, don't miss the beauty of the quiet moments with Jesus. We all need to learn how to have some quiet moments with Jesus. There's times I remember when our kids were little, I'm like, go to your room and have some quiet time. Now I'm like, please let me have some quiet time. It's like I want to be in his presence. I want to sit and bask in his presence. It's beautiful. And I tell you, when you get into his presence... Oh, he changes you. He changes you. And I've said this before, but it's like you just get a big bear hug from God. It's like the Holy Spirit just wraps his arms around you and it just melts you. I don't know if you've experienced that, but I'm telling you, you can. You can. And then you're able to face whatever it is you need to face. Know when God's asking you to be quiet. And know in your relationships when you need to be quiet And then when you need to speak and know how to speak, I'll leave all that there. Come to the marriage conference. We'll talk more about that later. (laughs) The other key is persistent proclaiming. And I love this because it's like on one side, we need to be quiet. But on the other side, there's a time. There's a time where you need to proclaim. There's a time where you need to speak it forth and not hold back. And when what comes out of your mouth matters. Look at Psalm 27, 13. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in what? In the land of the living. How many of you are like, amen and amen. I would have lost heart. But I know that you're with me. I know that you're good. I know that you're faithful. And you've got to proclaim these things. Ezekiel 37, 4 says, again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and said, say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. It's time for us to start prophesying, prophesying the word of the Lord. Start speaking the things of the word of the Lord. Start prophesying over your marriages instead of talking bad about your marriages. Start prophesying over your wayward children instead of keep saying, oh, they're bad. Oh, they're lost. Oh, they're terrible. Start prophesying to their 
future. Start prophesying to their hope. Start prophesying to the victory. Start prophesying to the breakthrough in your family. Start prophesying to the healing that needs to come forth. We need to speak forth the good things of the Lord. We need to be alignment with the word of God. What does the word of God say over my situation? Start prophesying over your finances and that doesn't mean you don't need to work. You need to get your rear end into work. But I am saying prophesy that there are good things coming. Quit prophesying to the negative. Quit prophesying to the past. Quit prophesying to the things that have held you bound. You will break through when you prophesy to the good things that God has for you. And I'm tired of seeing Christians bound up. It's time for Christians to stand up and say, my God's able. My God can do it. Your God can do it. There's hope. There's hope. And there is a future for God's children. Amen. Amen. So there's a time to shout. Who can speak life and not death? The other one is persist in praise and worship. Become a worshiper. Stop letting them be the only worshipers up here. I tell you what. I tell you what, I on purpose, you know, I, I want to be the best worshiper in this house. I think Tina tries to be it too. I'm just telling you, y'all standing there all prim and proper. Whatever. God's done so much. Quit trying to be something that you, I don't know what you're trying to be. Give it all to him. Give it all to him. He just, and I'm not saying if you're like, well, that's not my personal. It's fine. It's fine. God sees our heart. Thank you, Lord, right? But in your heart, praise him. Praise him. Get freed up. I'm not saying you got to jump up and down and do what everyone does. We're not looking for people to be conform, conforming to each other. But I am saying be free in worship freely tell Jesus how much you love him freely say God I give you my all freely thank him thank him for his goodness thank him for his faithfulness thank him for all the things he's done in your life quit looking at all the bad and all the negative and look at what all is so good what what do you have that's good we all have good stuff in our life yeah there's bad but I'm not going to sit and focus on the bad. I'm going to focus on the good. Huh. There's a quote that says, if you will praise through, God will come through. And I love that. Even when I feel defeated, yet I will praise you. I will praise my Lord. So the other point is persistent purpose. And I believe this is the last point. Persist in the purpose God's given you. We all have purposes and desires and things and i believe there's so many dreams and things that are put there by god but life has a way to detour you or to knock you off course or for those dreams to die but i pray today that your eyes will be open and your faith will be stirred once again to go after the things god's put in your heart and in his way and to be led the biggest thing be led by the holy spirit be led by the holy spirit because it's his timing. It's, it's the way he leads us. And you can trust God to lead you where you need to go and when to go. And you always need to be led by peace. Not pulling, not pushing. If there's peace, usually you know that's God if there's peace. As Psalm 23, 2 and 3 says, He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I love that. When we do all of these things, I'm telling you, you will see the walls come down. You will see the walls that have been built up around your life start falling. Maybe it's brick by brick, but you're going to see these things coming off your life because like Tim was saying it, we've seen it so many times how someone's one way and then you see them a year, two years down the way and they're completely different. And that's only by the grace of God. And it's only because they said yes to Jesus and they actually applied what God's asking them to do and then they're never the same they're never the same he's the god of the breakthrough he's the god of your breakthrough 
It may take time. You may go in some circles and it may be hard, but I'm telling you, if you will persist, our faithful God, with each step, you will grow closer and closer to Jesus. With each step, you will grow deeper and deeper in understanding and in truth. And with each step, you are going to step in to what he's called you to be. And you're going to look back and you're going to go, whoa, God. Only because of God. Only because of God. Because I've said it a million times, but for those of you that are new, like, if you knew me 30, 40 years ago, I was so bashful, I would just cry at a drop of a head if I had to talk publicly. But God does mighty things. He changes us. He changes us. And his anointing pours in your life. Then you are able to go and do whatever he calls you to do. Step by step, he transforms your life. Amen. 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 Well, before we can walk in any form of breakthrough you got to know who Jesus Christ is. So I just want every eye all over this place closed and every head bowed. And I just want to let you know that Jesus has a plan for you. And there may be people in here or maybe online that it is time for you to get things right with God. It is time for you to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. As we're going to see these people getting baptized, that's exactly what they did. They said yes to Jesus. I'm turning from the past. I'm turning from my old ways. And I'm going to follow hard after God. Because Jesus died for you. He poured out his blood for you that cleanses and washes our sins away. Do you want to know him today? Because he has his arms wide open and he wants to know you. He wants you to be his child. He wants you to serve him because he loves you so much. So anyone in here, if maybe you walked with the Lord for a season and you walked away and you know, I got to come home. I got to come back. Or if you've never given your heart to Jesus this is your moment. This is your hour. He's the God that's able. He's the God of the breakthrough. But he's asking you this morning, will you surrender to me and make me your Lord and your Savior for real? So all over this place, if there's anyone in here, you're like, yes, that's me. Raise your hand high. Raise your hand high. I see that hand. Is there anyone else that you're like, I, I want to make things right with the Lord. I want to make him. I see that hand. I want to follow Jesus. I want to be filled with passion for Jesus. I want to serve him all the days of my life. All right, I see that hand. Is there anyone else? I see, I saw three hands. Is there anyone else? And who knows online if that's you, this is your moment. So I'm going to say this prayer, and I just want each person, I want everyone to pray it with me, but you guys that raised your hand, say this with your heart. Mean this with your heart. He will change and transform your life. I promise you that. So everyone, just repeat this after me. Jesus, I repent of my sins. I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. For dying for me. And I thank you that your blood right now is washing me clean. Forgive me, Lord. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Change me forever. I want to follow you with all my heart. Thank you for making me your child right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Woo.